in this video, I just want to talk about project management for a few minutes because there's been a lot of people I've seen across social media platforms that are asking uh, what process they should use and how they should go ahead to um, reduce scope creep, which is where um, things aren't aligned at the start of a project and other things creep into that project. And also, how do people manage expectations? How do people ensure that the work gets done on time? How do people keep track when things get overwhelming? And I find that a project management system really, really helps with that. Now, there's lots of different systems out there you can use. Some people use Trello. Some people just use Excel. Some people use Asana. All great systems. I personally use Zoho Projects. The reason I do that is because it links into my CRM. Uh, I've got a, a personal domain, so people can just go to projects.onlinemastery.co.uk, uh, and I get to customize this as much as I want, which is really powerful for me given uh, with the uh, projects that I work on. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to talk you through this and I'm going to show you how I use it and hope that it may inspire you to either use something similar or just to adopt some of the practices that I'm using, some of the procedures. So the first thing we do with any new project is we type in a name for it and this can be absolutely anything at all. Give it an owner and a start and an end date. Now whenever I work with a client, our projects always start on the first of the month um, and they may roll over, so it may be like a three-month project. So I'm just going to imagine this is one for December, January, and it's going to finish at the end of February. So this is a three-month project. Uh, give it a description, uh, and that's great. So now we've got a, a description about what the project's about, a name for the project, uh, and we can go ahead and we can give it a, a layout if we need to. If there's a budget uh, involved, so let's just say that this uh, this project is worth a thousand pounds. Okay, and default uh, billing status, we'll set this to billable. Uh, we can also have some additional fields. So these are some custom fields that I've got, um, but you can have other stuff there as well. And choose whether this is private or whether it is a public uh, project. Private is just for, on Zoho, private is just for anybody who's in your team. Public is for yourself and also your clients. You can add clients as well. Uh, and public just means that the clients can follow it. So I'm going to go ahead and add the project. So the first thing that you'll see uh, is your dashboard. This is your project dashboard. Um, and we can see the information here. If I click on the overview, all of those uh, additional fields that we set with a description, uh, we can see that start, end date, and how long we have left. Uh, and so the dashboard is a really, really good way for you to be able to come in here and see all of the information uh, around this project. And you can reorganize this. Uh, if you want to, you can click on the settings and just turn on, on or off any of the things that are not relevant to you. Uh, and you can do that there quite simply. You can go ahead and edit that if you need to. So with that being said, what I'm going to do is just take you through my process now. So the first thing that I would do within a project is I would set the milestones. And the milestones are the big um, big sections within the project. Now, I break this down in a very, very simple way. I do this on months. So for me, the first milestone here would be December uh, 2018. Okay, and this milestone would start on the 1st of December and it would end at the end of December. It can be an external, again, this is again, internal team or external, and who's responsible for this milestone. Now, you may have different milestones. You may have a developer milestone, a design milestone. Uh, you may have a strategy milestone. It might be that you've got this product milestone or this project milestone. Um, so... All of the things within the project for different departments, maybe there's lots of different ways you can use this. This is just how I use it. And you don't even have to use a milestone. It's optional. It's just I like to use it. So now that we have that, that's done. That's all we need to do. If I click on a milestone, I can actually comment on the milestone with my internal team. Uh, and we can talk about things like that. But that's the first thing I do there. So I've created one milestone. If I click on milestones, I can see the overview. I can then go ahead and add another milestone. So I'm going to do Jan 2019. Same thing. I'm going to set my uh, timer up uh, just to be for the whole of January. I'm going to have that as external and add that. That's now done. And the thing that I want you to focus on here, and what's really important, is the tasks. So I'm just going to click on tasks now. And when you click on tasks, it gives you three options. Do you want to add a milestone, which is the top level? Do you want to add a task list or do you want to add a task? Now I could just go straight ahead here and I could add a task. But the reason I'm doing it this way, the reason I'm doing the milestones first, I'm just going to go ahead and add, uh, add the last one, 
which is going to be February. Uh, the reason I do this is because it adds a lot more structure to the process. Um, any project can be overwhelming when you're looking at it for the first time in its entirety. But simply just by, uh, yeah, that didn't help. I need to set February. Um, just by breaking it down and chunking it into this, it just makes it a lot easier. So I can see there's 11 days to go on this milestone. Then 34 days left here and 54 days here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create some tasks. So I'm just going to add the task list. And this can be as simple as week one. Okay, and it's for December. Okay, and I can just do that. That's it. I can just do that. It's as simple as that. If I want to add another one, I can do week two. Now, this can be different. You can do all different types of uh, task lists. So you could create a task list that is called backlog of all of the stuff that you should have done but haven't quite done yet. You can create a task list which is called, uh, uh, let's just say, um, Xmas video. Okay. So this could be a uh, for the Xmas video project. So you can have all of these different task lists. Okay, but I like to obviously have, you don't have to have week one, week two, it's just an example. Uh, but you could have backlog, Xmas video. Um, another one might be, we've got to send out our Christmas cards. So that could be an entire task list there, set within December. Right, so now that we've got this, what we can do is we can actually set tasks. So I click on add task, Xmas video. First thing I've got to do is create script okay then I need to let's just say um, I need to uh, create video or record video uh, get lights for example for the video um, clear space on memory card now what I'm doing here is I am literally just dumping out of my mind all of the things that need to be done um, so then it could be uh, record test video now I'm obviously not saying you need to do this many things I'm just trying to use it as an example uh, uh, send test video for review with team record main video um, edit video okay all of the different things you need to do publish video bed And then you can say, oh, actually, do you know what? I realized I need to create a video placeholder. And actually, that task should actually be here. And so you can just reorder that. So now what you've done is you've created all of these things that need to be done for the Xmas video. Okay, what I can now do uh, is I can just click on one of these, choose the whole lot, set the owner, because I want the owner for this to be me. And I've now just assigned myself uh, as the owner of all of these projects. Okay. I can then go ahead and I can say what the start date is. So for me, maybe I can say this project needs to uh, be started tomorrow and it should take one day. Okay. I need to get the lights. I can't do that until uh, Tuesday. So that's something that we've done on Tuesday. Clear space on my memory card. Yeah, absolutely. That's something that can be done tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to record the test video. So I'm going to do that on Wednesday. Uh, I'm going to send it to the team to review on the 21st. And actually, I need to get that done before uh, the 24th because the video, uh, I'm going to record it on the 24th. Uh, the video is going to be edited on the 24th, busy down the 24th. Uh, the video is going to be published on Christmas Day because that's when the video is going out, for example. So the placeholder needs to be done on the 24th. Video needs to be embedded on the website on the 25th. Okay, all of the things that need to be done. It's leaving it a bit tight, but this just gives you an example. So now what I can do is I can come across to you and say, okay, um, these are all of the things that need to be done. And you can reorganize, by the way. So for example, um, the columns and things up here, uh, I can actually go ahead and I can reorder all of the columns, things like that, make sure that they're all um, aligned to what you want them to be. Maybe you don't want to see all of the things that you're seeing here. You might just want to see different things. So I can customize these columns and I can say, actually, do you know what? I'm not actually that bothered about the um, duration. I'm not even bothered about the priority of these or what, who it's created by. Um, what I want to know is, I'll put this work here 
and this time log here. So work and time log are really important to me. I use these all the time. And the reason I do that is because I have a view that looks like this. This is what my screen looks like when I'm recording it. And so what this allows me to do is say, okay, create this script. So I imagine that this creating the script is going to take me one hour. Great. Get in the lights. Well, I need to go and pick them up. It's about a four hour project. So I know I'm going to need to do that. Uh, clearing space on the memory card. Oh, that's probably going to take me about 15 minutes. So I, I can add that. Uh, record a test video. I know that's about an hour's worth of work. Okay, so now I can say, right, uh, send a test video for review to the team. Well, I'm going to just say an hour. It shouldn't, but let's just say it does. Record the main video. Let's just say that's another hour's worth of work. Uh, publish, uh, edit the video. Well, that's a big one. So it's going to take me actually six hours to do that. Publish the video. I know that that's going to take me another hour to publish. Uh, create a video placeholder. Um, I'm going to say it's going to take me about half an hour. Embed the video on the website. Uh, probably somewhere in the region of 15 minutes. So now what I've done is I've planned how much time it's going to take me to do this entire section. And that is really important to get to this stage. The reason I've done that is because now if I come back to my dashboard for this project and I have a look, I've got 10 tasks. And if I scroll down, I can see what's overdue. Scroll down even further, I can see uh, the number of items and everything that's uh, due to be done. But what's really important is I can see what's planned. 16 hours of time have been planned out so far. All of my tasks are at the start in a 0% completion. So I can see that I need to allocate 16 hours in my diary. And also, one of the things here, if I click on calendar, I can see when everything's due to be done. And I can make sure that this is all linked into my calendar so I know that this time is now blocked out and I know that within reason I'm not going to be double booked or doing anything else. So you can actually put in other calendars here. So it's really, really good to see that you're blocking out your time effectively. Okay, if I come back to my dashboard uh, and I'm, I'm having a look here at all of the things that need to be done again, one of the things that I could do now, just click on tasks, is say, okay, I'm going to create my script. Now, I'm just showing you at the top level. What I can do now is I can click on any of these tasks and it brings up the task itself. So now I can put any other information. I can do all of the stuff I did on the other screen here. I can create a description. Um, this is the task description. Okay, and I can go ahead and save that. I can also comment. So um, I need feedback on this script. Add a comment. All right, and I could say team member, whoever the team member might be, and I can do the at sign if there's anyone else on the team. What do you think of the intro, for example? And I can add that as a comment. And if there's somebody in your team with that name, it will add them. I can then go to documents and I can attach a file. So I can upload the, uh, the script. Okay, I can even do subtasks. Subtasks could be um, get team to check script all different types of things that you can do so it's really really powerful for you to be able to do this uh, check these things off make sure they're all completed now all of these here are tasks associated to this task list I can go between all of my different task lists check them out all of my different tasks but the really powerful thing uh, and, and sometimes I do use this with a description when I'm creating things but ultimately, I only do that initially. Once that's done and it's finished, it's not a problem. Once something's, once I'm working on something, I say it's in progress. Now, anyone in my team can see this, and also I can see this. Once it's completed, just mark it as completed. Checks it off, task is done. What's really powerful, though, and this is what I do, once that's done and set up, and I do my brain dump once a day, I just make sure everything's updated, make sure everything's ready, um, Anything that pops up during a day just gets thrown into a to-do or a to sort. Just gets and, and actually, I use a different app for this. I actually use Wonderlist. And I can just open it up on my phone, open it up anywhere. I can just do a complete brain dump of anything that I'm thinking. And then once a day or once a week, what I can do is just look over that, come and I can put it all into the project management system and I can schedule it. Because it's all right talking about doing something. It's all right even planning to do something, but until you schedule it, until it's actually in the diary, until it, you've carved out time, it's never going to get actioned. And so as long as it's carved out, I've carved out time for it, I know it's going to get actioned, I'm going to work on it. This is how progress happens.
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you that as I come in here and this in Google Chrome, by the way, I right click pin tab. This stays here all the time. I have it open on a screen and whatever project I'm working at, this is what's open. I can see this. I said, okay, what am I going to be working on next? What needs to be done today? Okay, so these are the things that need to be done today. I'm working on the create script. And I can filter this, by the way. I can filter to say, um, I only want to see things, um, you know, that are due that need to be done um, today. And I can, I can look at all of these different things, or I can say this week, uh, or, you know, um, there's nothing to be done today, obviously, but whatever. Like that just gives you an example of how you can say um, all the oh, these are all the spans overdue or anything like that, uh, and you can you can customize the uh, filter to be whatever you want it to be, uh, and you can also save these results if you wanted to. So there's lots of different things that you can play about and do here: importing tasks, exporting them, um, lots of things to play with. But what I do and what's really important to me is when I'm working on a task. So let's say I'm going to create a script. I click this button, start the timer. It's really powerful and really important for me to be able to start a timer. And I can click up here on this global timer widget and I can see all of the timers that are running for this project. And at any time I can pause it if I decide to go off and do something else. And when I come back to it, I can simply just start again. And at any point in time, I can stop that timer. Is this billable time or non-billable? Well, unfortunately for now, this is non-billable. Okay, I can just say, okay, start that timer again. Now, what's really powerful about this is that as this time is running, if I then was to uh, click on a task and I was to have a look here, not only have I planned some time, but we'll be able to see what the actual time is. I can even come across to the timesheets and I can see all of the time spent on all of these activities. I can group this by user, by grid, by month. I can see all of my billable and non-billable hours. And I know how long projects have been taking me. This is really, really powerful for you to have a much better understanding, a much better idea of how the projects are working, who's spending time on what areas, how long you're spending on areas, and what's getting done, and why it's getting done, and why it's not. So if all of a sudden you was meant to create a Facebook post, and that took you four hours, you might ask yourself why. Well, actually, it's because I was meant to create the Facebook post, but I got distracted, ended up talking to a load of people, and scrolling pictures of cats for three hours. So it gives you a real good idea of where you're leaking your time. And it also allows you to ensure that you're keeping on track to make sure things are done. By the end of the day, I look at all of the things that need to be done on my dashboard just to make sure that I've completed my tasks. If not, they either get rolled over into the next day or I just make sure I do them before I go to bed. So it's really, really important that you make sure that you actually do use the timer. A system, no matter what project management system you use, is only as good as the person who's using it. So you must make sure you're using it. It's very, very important. But again, just to show you, clicking on the time here, we can see that we've spent a minute on this project or this pro uh, this task. If I click on this now, we can see the time log's been updated. And if I come back to the dashboard now, I can see one thing's been completed. And if I scroll down, how much time was planned and how much actually was expended. Really, really powerful and really good for you to be able to see this. So this is what I use for my project management system, um, not only here, but across all of my projects. If I went to my home, I would get a dashboard of my entire business, of all of the projects that I'm working on, all of the different times. And it's very, very powerful to be able to see that. So I hope that helps in this video. I hope it gives you some understanding and some insight into how I use this. And by the way, once a week, I'll take a screenshot of this and I'll send it to the client so they can see. I'm not saying you have to do that, but it's very, very good for the client to be able to have a good understanding and to be able to see the progress that's being made throughout the weeks, days, months, uh, whatever it is that you're, you're working on. So I hope this helps uh, my introduction guide into project management using Zoho projects. And uh, yeah, please let me know how this works out for you.